In this course, we are learning web development from the absolute beginning. And if you've missed any of the other videos, the link to the whole course is in the description. So moving forward here, in the last video, we used margin and padding to create our basic containers for our entire web page and all the content that will go in those containers. In this video, we're going to learn how to actually finish our layout by using different display styles, different display properties in CSS. I'll show you how we're going to do this and what those display properties are by creating three divs here in this triple section. So I'm going to do div times three and hit tab. That's a nice little thing we can do. And then I get to also tab. I'm going to hit A tab, B tab, C tab. And now, whoops, there we go. And now I actually have some content in there. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. But you can see by default, they get what's called a block layout. And I'm going to start showing you um, how this all works in CSS and how we can change that default display. I'm just going to target every single div on the page since I only have three divs right now. And let's go ahead and give them a background color of red. That way I can actually see what I'm dealing with. So you can see that by default, a div fills out its entire container. If you remember, this section has a padding of 20 pixels on all sides. So the actual inside of the container starts here and goes all the way over to here. And a div by default gets what's called display block. You see, if I change it to display block, nothing happens because it's already display block. I can change this display mode to several different things. I can make display inline. Display inline is going to put them all one in a row and each box will be the size of its content. So if A gets a lot more A's in it, then it gets larger. But what I cannot do with display inline is actually set a width. So I can't say this is 100 pixels wide. It's not going to do anything. Display inline totally looks at the content inside of that div and sizes itself accordingly. So if you actually want to make it a fixed width, you can do inline block. And now I can set those to be 100 pixels wide. So now each one of them is 100 pixels wide because they're in line, but it's also a block. And I get to tell that block how wide and how tall to be. I can also give it a height of 20 pixels. So then it's going to be 20 pixels tall, which it looks like they're already kind of that high just because of the text. So you have block and you have inline block. And another fun display, which is much more complicated, is called flex. What you have to do for flex is you have to add it to the parent container. So whatever the parent of all these divs is, that is the section tag, you're going to want to make that display flex. So there we go. We have display flex on there. And I'm going to go ahead and get rid of inline block here. Just going to leave those block. And you can see that flex automatically does an inline block type of thing here. So what we're going to do then is we're going to go flex direction. And you have several options here. You can do row, you can do column, you can do reverse row. So let's make it row. And that's what the default is. You can also do row dash reverse. Uh, which is not nearly as useful and it actually does something a little unusual. It takes the first div and puts it all the way on the right and then goes backwards from there. You can also tell the flex direction to be column. And that's going to go top to bottom. And as you guessed, you can do column reverse, which seems even less useful. Let's take our top div and put it on the bottom and go backwards from there. But it does have its purposes, I'm sure, to some people somewhere on the earth. So let's go back to flex direction row, which is kind of our default. We just have to do one little magic thing, margin auto. And now, boom, it's automatically going to be flexed across the whole width. So if I stretch my window out here, you can see the boxes stay 100 pixels wide, but they're always going to be flexed across the entire content and the margins are automatically taken care of. We have a half margin here, a half margin here, another half margin. You can see that it just looks correct. It looks the way that it should work. And there's a lot more options with Flexbox that you can do. Display Flex is called Flexbox. That's, we're doing what's called a Flexbox layout in here. That's very important that you know that. Um, and so that's how we're going to account for those three divs that we have going on. I'm gonna get rid of some extra A's here. So let's go ahead and move on to a navigation. How would we handle a navigation? It's a little bit different. We actually want to use inline block instead. So let's go over to this header here and let's add a few tags in here. Let's add an H1 tag and we'll call it title. Uh, let's also add a nav tag. Nav is a semantic tag, so it doesn't do anything. It's just a div. Uh, and so what's inside of this, we're going to do a UL with three LIs. Let's do a UL and I'm going to do this. I'm going to do a greater than symbol 
li times three. That says, hey, give me a UL, and inside of that UL, give me three LIs. Boom. So that's done right there. Let's say this is going to be our navigation home, uh, locations, and contacts. Let's say we're going to make a website for a bakery. Maybe they'll make awesome cupcakes or something like that. Who doesn't love cupcakes? So this is going to be our top navigation. And then this will be our title here. So let's go ahead and style this navigation properly. I'll go ahead here and do a UL. And the UL is basically, let's do a margin of zero. ULs by default have some margin and padding to them. Padding of zero. And I want these bullet points to go away. So I'm going to do list style type none. That's the magic word for making all those bullets go away. We want no list style type. So that's our UL. And then the LIs, I'm going to give them a display inline block. And now they're going to lay out, boom, 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 just how we'd expect them to lay out. I can also give them a margin. Let's give them a margin of 20 pixels. Ta-da! Now we are set up. Of course, we have a left margin here, so I don't really want that. I have a couple choices for what I can do here. I can give them a zero top, 20 pixel right, zero, and zero, which also accounts for it. Basically, we're only adding margin right. Or I can also explicitly say margin dash right is 20 pixels and do that as well. That is the exact same thing. So you can also specify margins by just picking one value you want to change. So as you can see, it's starting to look like a website, but there's a few things we need to do from here. First of all, we need to actually learn how to make multiple pages because we're gonna need a locations page and a contact page. And we're also gonna need to CSS target a little differently. This rule right here, for instance, will apply to every div on our entire page, and that's not correct. So in the next lesson, we are going to learn how to build out the rest of that website with multiple pages and target CSS in a better way.